installing a number of containerized water gardens to demonstrate how we can incorporate the beauty and diversity of an aquatic setting into the landscape without the investment of a full water garden. Over the next few weeks, I'll demonstrate how to install a containerized water garden and, and different types of plantings, but today I want to focus on the plant material in the garden. Aquatic plants can be divided based upon where they grow relative to the water's surface. There's some plants that are completely emerged beneath the water's surface, others that float on the water's surface, and then those that send their foliage and flowers up above the water. When we think of the water garden plant, the image that comes to mind is that of a surface plant, the water lily. Um, water lilies are a wonderfully diverse group. They're most, the most common water garden plant utilized. Um, and they can be broken down into two varieties, uh, hardy water lilies and tropical water lilies. This is a hardy lily. And um, the, the benefit of these is that we can overwinter them right in our water garden, whereas the tropical varieties need to be brought in over the winter. They come in a variety of colors, the hardy having yellows, pinks, and cream colors. A few more options are available when we get into the tropical lilies. Uh, there's more colors and the lily pads tend to be a little bit larger, but both of these make a beautiful addition to the water garden. Another very common plant is the lotus. And again, we have, um, we have a native uh, American lotus that we find in our natural marshes and wetlands. But when it comes to the water garden, the sacred lotus, which originates from Asia, Australia, and Egypt, that tends to be the one that we most commonly see. Uh, lotus are interesting. They send their foliage just above the water surface. Um, and also their flowers will merge above the water surface as well. Um, beneath the water, they create large uh, rhizomes and stems that spread and the, the foliage will emerge from these. They can be rather aggressive in a water garden um, just because they, they grow so well. And so for this reason, many water gardeners prefer to grow lotus in an isolated or separate container than other water garden plants. The next group of plants are those that send their foliage up above the water. And we call these emergent or marginal plants. And many of my favorite foliage plants really make excellent additions to the water garden. Uh, some of the tropical um, plants in this group include the papyrus or cypress. And here I have one of our favorites, King Tut. Um, this plant will reach a mature height of five to seven feet, so it really creates a very striking appearance in the water garden. And we can submerge this with about three to eight inches of water above its crown, and it'll do quite well. If you have a little bit smaller garden, uh, you might consider baby tut, which maxes at a height of two to three feet. Our elephant ears, or, or colocasia, also work well with um, their bulbs submerged uh, in a few inches of water. And this is black magic. We just love this plant here for the purple stems and the deep green luxuriant foliage. We have a few native plants that are very hardy and also do wonderful in the water garden. Uh, the first of these is pickerel. And pickerel has a heart-shaped foliage that has a bit of a tropical look. And it will also have spikes of purple flowers. Now this one's a little pale looking. It's been indoors and lost a bit of its color. Um, and this is a lovely tropical looking plant, an excellent addition to the water garden. Another hardy native is Thalia. And this is often called the hardy water canna because of the canna-like foliage. It'll also produce beautiful flowers uh, in a variety of colors depending on the cultivar selected. Lizard's tail is another native that has a little bit different uh, appearance. The foliage is smaller um, and it's a little bit bushier rather than as upright in its growth habit. It'll produce white flowers that have a little, grow like a little lizard's tail, which is where it gets its name. A number of sedges and, and rushes like this corkscrew rush also do very well with their roots submerged in a few inches of water. And they just add a, a different texture and interest to the planting. And also many of our irises 
will also do well submerged in a little bit of water. Now you want to be careful when you work with the iris. One of the plants that's most commonly sold uh, for the aquatic setting of, of the iris is the yellow flag iris. And if you take one look at our bog garden, you can see just how aggressive yellow flag can be. Uh, this is one that I would avoid putting in the water garden. And in fact, we are preparing to eradicate it from our own gardens here. If it escapes the garden, it can be uh, invasive in natural systems as well. And this is a common problem, unfortunately, with many of the commercially available aquatic plants. Um, they come from tropical areas. Uh, some of them are hardy in our systems. And if they escape the water garden, they become extremely invasive in our lakes and ponds. And while we think of our water garden as being very isolated from lakes and rivers, um, there are a number of ways that a plant can move from our garden to these natural systems through the activity of birds, uh, through flooding events, and even unintentional human introductions. So the best way to protect our native uh, waterways from invasive plants is to simply not use them in our water gardens. Um, I have a few. Uh, unfortunately, one of the most common water garden plants is extremely invasive. This is water hyacinth, and it's popular because it produces really beautiful purple flowers, and it has these interesting air pockets. I'm going to break into one. Um, and this is what allows the plant to float on the water surface. These little uh, pouches are full of cells that hold air that keep it afloat. Um, but sections of the plant break off, and it reproduces very quickly uh, and spreads across waterways. Millions of dollars are spent each year trying to eradicate water hyacinth. Another highly invasive plant is the uh, parrot's feather. And out of the water, it doesn't look like much. Uh, but when that foliage floats in the water, it has a beautiful le uh, feathery appearance and really is popular for that. But again, can be rather invasive in our waterways. And then water lettuce, which is a, another floater. Um, this one reproduces rapidly, uh, vegetatively. And I've seen images where this completely covers uh, pond surface. So another invasive plant that we really want to take care of um, and avoid introducing. You can learn more about invasive aquatic plants and some alternative natives that we can use uh, in the Don't Free Lily brochure. Look for this at your local county extension office.